So I'll admit, when it comes to my painting, I like a challenge. Now I've been taking some suggestions for what to do next, but I'll be honest, either you guys are sadists and like seeing me suffer, or you're big fans of the Sons of Dawn. So you requested it, and here it is. How to paint Grim Dark Imperial Fist. What's up guys, I'm Rich from Spray Black Studios and it's time for another episode in my Grimdark Space Marine series. Now if you've been watching the channel a while, you'll know that I've done tutorials for the Raven Guard, the White Scars, the Black Templars, the Blood Angels and more recently, the Space Wolves. Well for this video I wanted to challenge myself and it was time to give in to the regular requests and give the Grimdark treatment to an army that is generally very bright and very vibrant, the Imperial Fists. So to start off, we need the right model. I picked up this Primaris Captain a little while ago and kept it until I had the right project, and I think this is the one. A few small conversion pieces from the Imperial Fists upgrade pack and a Custody Shield, and we've got a pretty fit-in Imperial Fist Captain. As you can see, I've kept the head separate just to make the painting a little bit easier. To start it all off, we need to give him a priming and this black Vallejo surface primer will do the job perfectly. I do tend to start pretty dark for something like this as although we are building up to a yellow, I do want all those shadows to stay nice and dark. Now generally the coverage of pretty much any yellow paint over black is pretty terrible. But as I am using the airbrush to do the priming and the base coating, I won't really have to worry too much about this as I can build it up nice and slowly. For the initial base coat, I'm going to start with Vallejo's Burnt Umber. This fairly dark brown colour is a great initial base coat for yellow, a little bit brighter than the Rhinox Hide I used for the Space Wolf, but it will give us some nice warm shadows that should complement the yellow armour nicely. For the yellows, I'm going to take my time and build them up nice and slowly. Starting off with a mix of the Vallejo Burnt Umber and Citadel's Avalon Sunset, this will provide our first stepping stone towards that fairly bright yellow colour. This will be applied mostly from above, but also down to roughly a 45 degree angle, meaning that those deepest shadows will stay pretty dark. This paint has been thinned quite a bit, so I can build it up in thin layers just to get maximum coverage without applying too much paint and clogging all those nice details. Pure Avalon Sunset is next, and this will form our mid-tone. This is now applied almost entirely from above, with the exception of just picking out some of the more important areas. You'll notice that on a model like this Space Marine, this will still get pretty decent coverage on most of the areas, but on a more detailed or on more dynamically posed miniatures, you may have to be a little bit more considered on where you are applying this. As a final touch on the armor, I'll grab out the Vallejo Moon Yellow, and this will be used to pick out those areas where we want the real brightest highlights. Areas like his chest plate, his shoulder pads, and the upper parts of his backpack. Now this is looking all a bit bright and vibrant for a grim dark job, but don't worry, it won't stay like this for long. Before I tackle muting this armour down, I do just want to pop in some colours on some of the other elements. With the bad and black, I'll pick out the trim on those shoulder pads, some of the details like the Aquila on his chest, and then that Storm Bolter and his cloak. For these black areas, I'm going to build up the highlights using a soft dry brush and some Citadel Dawnstone paint. Using dry brushing for this job is a simple and easy way to build up a little bit of texture on that cloak, just to break up those large smooth areas which don't really feel quite right for a grim dark mini. Using very quick and light brushing motions will give a more subtle effect to suit the smoother surfaces of the cloak, but for the storm bolter and the armour details I will swap to a slightly harder brush 
just to pick out those sharper edges. As a brighter highlight, I will use Citadel's Celestra Grey, again applied using a dry brush, but this time using very soft passes with the brush. This will pick out the edges of those areas and push up that level of contrast. Now I want to give this miniature a little splash of colour just to break it up a bit more and the material and the tassels will give a great opportunity for this. Initially I'll start with Citadel's Gal Vorbach as the base coat and then I'm going to turn to Corn Red just to provide me with some highlights. I'm not building this up to be too bright as I want this to complement the yellow rather than detract from it. As a final step before I get to all that lovely weathering that I'm sure you're here for, I'm going to use a little bit of Rhinox Highs on all of the areas of battle damage on his armour plates. This isn't completely essential at this stage as our weathering steps will provide a similar effect but this is going to provide a little bit more contrast in the washes and will stand out just a little bit more. So now all the base coats are in place and the model is looking pretty good, just not too grim dark. Now like the Space Wolf tutorial, I'm not going to use the traditional streaking grime and instead I'm going to use what is rapidly becoming my favourite item in the AK Interactive range and that's the panel liner for brown and green camo. This is an enamel paint which works really well to mute down bright colours like this yellow or the Fenrisian grey like I used on the Space Wolf but as it is a pretty neutral brownish grey in colour it doesn't really add too much colour into the recesses which can make a model like this look a bit busy. For today I'm going to be applying this with the airbrush so first things first I need some protection. To apply this with the airbrush I'm going to slowly build up multiple layers. It is quite thin so there is no need to thin it any further but if it is applied too heavily it can pull up and cause watermarks much like if you apply a wash or a contrast paint too heavy. By applying thin layers and letting them set slightly between each pass you can slowly build up the desired effect. Now I'm aiming for almost full opacity here so that lovely bright yellow armour will almost be entirely hidden. This can be a little nerve wracking so many people do prefer to varnish prior to this step but if you've allowed your previous paint to dry fully this isn't compulsory. In some instances I actually prefer applying this without a varnish as it can cause the lower layers of paint to be more affected by the wash than they would if you'd used a matte varnish over the top. As this model is likely to sit on my shelf for the rest of its life, I'm not too worried about it being hard wearing, so we're going to go straight with the enamel. So now that the model's looking like the average festival goer at Glastonbury, it's time to do that lovely therapeutic bit that everybody loves, the reduction. With some clean white spirit and a cotton bud, I will remove some of this effect using gentle rolling and dabbing motions with a damp but not completely soaking cotton bud it will lift the enamel off the raised surfaces and leave it down in those recesses. There will be some areas that you want to clean up that your cotton bud won't be able to reach though. So for this I'll grab an old small brush and dipping it into the white spirit just gently run it over these areas. When doing both of these be careful not to have too much white spirit on your cotton bud or on your brush as if you apply too much and it starts flowing you will lose some of the control over that effect and where it sits. Once that enamel has had a couple of hours to all dry properly it's time to apply a little bit more damage and for this I'm going to use the sponge chipping method. Grabbing out some Rhinox hide again I'll use a small piece of sponge and having dabbed most of the paint off the sponge I'll use some very gentle dabbing motions just to apply some tiny spots and specks onto that yellow armour. It's very important to do this sparingly so do make sure that you dab off the majority of the paint prior to applying and take your time in applying it. You don't want this effect to be too overpowering. To create some slightly larger areas of chipping I'll take a very fine pointed brush and use this to apply some Rhinox Hide to some of the areas where the chipping is more concentrated and onto the edges of some of the armour plates. 
To make these chips stand out a little bit more, I'm going to grab out the sponge again and apply some Avalon Sunset in exactly the same manner. As the enamel wash has muted down the Avalon Sunset that we've already applied on the armour plates, this will now really stand out. Picking up that fine pointed brush again, I'll also pick out the edges of some of the larger areas of chipping too. This will give the chipping an impression of being in three dimensions and it's going to really sell the effect. With the armour plate in and most of the details done, it's time to pay some attention to that shield. For the shield and some of the other details on the miniature, I'm going to use a slightly different gold technique than I've used previously. I'm going to start off with a base coat of Citadel's Warplock Bronze. This is a great dark metallic paint that has pretty great coverage, although it does require a bit of thinning. As a mid-tone, I'll be using a mix of Warplock Bronze and Brass Scorpion. This I'm going to apply pretty much across the whole shield, leaving just the Warplock Bronze only in the very lowest recesses. This will give those stripes across the shields some nice definition. I will continue to build up those highlights. Next, go into pure brass scorpion and picking out all those raised details, making sure just to leave the mid tone and the base tones in place. To push this even further, I'll be adding some very small amounts of retributor armor down the edges of the shield and on the very highest details. This does look a little bit yellow and saturated at the moment because it is a very bright color, but this will soon be muted down with a little spot of weathering. With a few very small spots of Sycorax bronze added to the sharpest edges just to provide that little bit more contrast, we're done. But the shield does look a bit bright and clean and doesn't really fit with the rest of the model. So the easy way to fix this is to grab out the panel liner for brown and green camo again and use this as a unifying wash. Thinned ever so slightly, I'll apply this as a wash to all of these metallic areas. As I'll be applying this as a wash, it should sit in all of those lower areas and just tint the highlight slightly so I won't need to go back in and remove it using the white spirit and the cotton buds. Now as you can see, I've added a few more small details, but for me the armour is now just missing one thing. As we all know, whilst I love my desaturated and muted colour palettes, I also really love a nice bit of contrast. And this armour just needs to pop a little bit more. To do this I'm going to use the black wash made by Ammo as a panel liner. This is an enamel wash, much like streaking grime, but it's also really quite thin and flows much easier than things like Nuln Oil or Black Templar Contrast Paint. That means for jobs like this, for panel lining or for black lining, it just works so much better. Now we've got the armour and the weapons all done, it's time for the final part. His head. I'm going to start this all off by grabbing out the airbrush again and applying a Zenithal highlight using the Liquitex White Ink. This will not only aid with the placing of highlights and show me where the shadow should be, but it's also going to make it easier for me to apply the skin tones as I won't be trying for poor coverage over black. Now because the Zenithal highlight is in place, this means that I can start pretty bright for the skin tones without having to worry too much about poor coverage. This also means that I can rely on using washes to provide my shading, which is my preferred method. So I'm going to start off quite bright using a paint that I normally use as a mid-tone in Cadian Flesh Tone. Now although that Zenithal is there, I do still want to apply a good couple of thin coats just so that we're not clogging any of that nice detail. So after laying down a couple of thin coats of Cadian Flesh Tone, I'm going to start adding some highlights. Adding a little bit of white into the Cadian Flesh Tone will give me my first stage of highlights. Picking out the raised areas such as his nose, the upper parts of his forehead and his cheeks. It's important to thin down your paint appropriately for this job, just to help get a smoother transition between the tones. For an extreme highlight, I'm going to use Rakar Flesh. This is more of a desaturated bone colour than a flesh colour, but will provide a nice final highlight for the very highest areas. 
Now, as I mentioned earlier, I will be providing all my shading using washes, and it's not just gonna be a case of slapping Reichland flesh shade on it and having done with it. Instead, I want to add some more tones into this flesh, so starting with a mix of Drucky Violet and Contrast Medium. The Contrast Medium thins the paint, but also allows it to flow into the recesses easier, leaving the recesses such as his eye sockets with a nice purple tint, but allowing the highlights to be mostly unchanged. Unlike when I glaze with washes, I will apply a relatively large quantity of this, and then before it gets a chance to dry, I will use my brush to manipulate it, spreading it across the skin and preventing it from pulling up too much. Now as this guy has suffered a little bit of battle damage himself, I want to show these cuts as being fairly fresh. With some Caribou Crimson glazed into these cuts and around the eyes, this will add a little bit more visual interest into his skin tones and make those cuts look nice and fresh. As a final touch on his skin, we need to give him a little bit of stubble. So using some Drakenhof Nightshade, I will very carefully glaze this onto his jawline and around his mouth. This is a great little trick to provide that five o'clock shadow, but it needs to be very carefully done as if you apply too much, it can look rather odd. So with the skin done, it leaves a few small details such as his hair and his eyes. To save this video being too long, I skip these steps, but I can come back to them in the future if requested. But instead, let's jump to the fully constructed and painted Son of Dawn. So there we are, another marine joins this ragtag bunch of grimdark space marines. Now whilst I do joke, and I make no secret of the fact that I'm not much of a fan of the Imperial Fists from a lore perspective, this is actually a project that I've been quite looking forward to doing. The challenge of being able to get a very bright and vibrant colour scheme to blend with the whole grimdark aesthetic is a challenge that actually I quite relish doing and I'm really happy with how it's come out. If you haven't seen my previous Grimdark Space Marine tutorials then I will be providing links down in the description below and if you have any chapters that you think I should take a swing at then please let me know down in the comments below or hop on onto our discord server and let me know there. As always I'll provide a link to the discord in the description below. There are also some affiliate links down below for some of the products that I've used during this tutorial. These links are for the awesome guys over at Firestorm Games. And as mentioned, they are affiliate links, so any purchases made through there will provide the channel just a little kickback just to help me work with the running costs. Alternatively, if you want to help support the channel but don't want to part with your hard-earned cash, then please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and give the video a thumbs up. All of this helps to appease the YouTube algorithm and helps more people see my content. So thanks for watching this video guys. I really hope you got some value out of it. And remember, if all else fails, spray it black and start again. <laughs>